regarding heaven, wanting God to open some doors for some, some, for some things that he's already given you keys for. If you operate in the principles that I've already given you, some of these things that you're praying for, you already have access to. Well, good morning, saints of God. Good morning. Good morning to you. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited. God has brought us into another month, and we ought to be excited about that. Can we take a moment and just give God a thank you for bringing us to another month? Amen. Amen. He didn't have to do it, but oh God, we thank you that you did. Those of us that have gone through things in October, we are decreeing and declaring that our November shall be better. It shall be better. God has some things in store for us because I decree and declare that we are still in the year of favor, that God's favor is still over your life. And if you have not received it yet, just keep on praying, keep pressing, keep trusting, keep believing. I'm already preaching. Keep believing God is going to bring it to pass because if God spoke it, He's God enough to bring it to pass. Amen. 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 We want to welcome those that are watching in our cyber sanctuary. We welcome you. Welcome you this morning. We're going to ask that you would get your communion elements together. Uh, whatever you have there, your bread and your juice. And we're going to go before the Lord today. Uh, we're going to take communion together. This is a time. I want to speak to those of you uh, that feel as if you're disqualified from taking communion today. I know what you've been taught traditionally, that if you messed up in your life, then you're disqualified. But I want you to know that you're the very one that are, you are qualified. You're the very one that, 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 that should stand and remember that Jesus Christ's blood covers even you. So I want you to grab it. I want you to stand with me, even in your home. I want you to, to, to prepare your heart and your mind as we go before the Lord today. I want you to let your mind go back sacrifice that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ made for us that while we were yet sinners he died that when we didn't even deserve it he died for us and he didn't wait for us to get right before he shed his precious blood for us let's bless the communion elements that we have together today father God we thank you today we make much of the blood we remember shedding of the blood on Calvary for us and we ask the power of the Holy Spirit that you would bless the communion elements today transform them that they may be used for your spiritual use on today it's in Jesus name we pray amen on that day that we know as the Lord's Supper Jesus sat with his disciples and he took bread and after he had given thanks he broke it gave it he said this is my body that shall be broken for you do this in remembrance of me and they took and they ate together Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. So this cup represents the new covenant of my blood. Do this often in remembrance of me. And they took and they drank together. I want you to pray with me very quickly right where you are. Even those of you that are home, pray with me right there where you are. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We're, we're humbled that you allowed us to see this new month. We're mindful, Lord God, of the times that we're living in. Times of sickness and disease, unrest, pestilence, joblessness, hunger. But Father, you've kept us. For that, Father, we say thank you today. We, we thank you that we can talk to you today, that, that you've opened up an avenue for us to be able to pray, to speak to you tell you about all of our desires, all of our needs. You already know, Lord God, what we stand in need of. And we, we thank you today because you keep on making a way for us. We realize, Father, that we're not worthy, but you've found something inside of us that's worth saving, something that you can use to advance your kingdom. And so, Father God, we're thankful today for those things that we often take for granted. We we want to thank you today for our ability to stand up on our own feet. Father God, for our ability to just wave our hand 
for our ability to hear your word. We thank you that we're not in the hospital today. And for those of us that are watching from the hospital today, we thank you for life today, that, that you're with us wherever we may be. And Father God, we've come today to let every devil know that we're continuing to stand on your word. That you've not forgotten about us. That he who has begun a good work in us, that we believe by faith that you shall complete it to the day of Jesus Christ. We pray right now, Lord God, even for our neighbors. We intercede on the behalf of those that can't even pray for themselves this morning. We intercede on the behalf of those, Lord God, that are so sick that they can't even look up, lift up their head. We pray for those this morning, Lord God, that are incarcerated and not with their families this morning. We, we pray for those this morning that are living in shelters this morning. We, we, we pray, Lord God, for those that are in the, the elderly homes that haven't seen their children in months because of this disease. We pray for them, Lord God, that you would touch their hearts to let them know that you are their God. Let them know that they're not alone, that you still walk with them and talk with them. Speak to them, Father, even in the midnight hour. Let them know that they are loved. And so we thank you today. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you for our families, our children, our spouses. We thank you, Lord God, for food on the table. We thank you for our automobiles. We, 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 we thank you. We know the earth is yours, Lord God, and the fullness thereof. We know, Lord God, that we don't own anything, that everything belongs to you. And we thank you for trusting us with it. So bless your people on today. Bless us wherever we are. Pick us up. Lift us up. Stand us in the places that you would desire for us to be. We know you can, and by faith, we believe that you will. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Come on, let's give our God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Do me a favor. If you're watching us online at our cyber sanctuary, I want you to just type online, God is so good. God, God is so good. If you believe he's good, come on, let's give him another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, listen, before you be, before you are seated, I, I have a quick verse that I'm going to give you, the quick verse that we're going to read today. You, many of you have heard it. Many of you know it by heart. It's one, one chapter, Proverbs 29, 18. We're going to read it this morning from the King James Version. The King James Version of Proverbs 29, 18 houses and holds our word for today. And the word reads, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keep the law, happy is he. Amen. I, I want to talk to you today not from a message title, but I want to give you a decree that I heard God speak to my spirit and I'm delivering that message to you this morning. And that word is, believe the vision and trust the process. I, 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 don't, know who, I don't know who word that is, but what God told me to declare to you, Believe the vision and trust the process. Say that with me. Believe the vision and trust the process. Yeah, believe what God showed you and trust where he's taking you. Come on, let's give God another hand clap of praise right there. Father God, we thank you for this word that's about to go forth. We ask that you would bless our hearts and our minds to receive this word and to become this word. We're standing on this word this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Believe the vision, trust the process. Saints of God, you will never know your purpose unless you figure out why God created you. And only God knows your purpose because he determined it, hear me, when he gave you life. And I believe, and, and the prophet Jeremiah, he backs up my belief that God gives us vision after he has shown us purpose. That he lets you know the purpose for which he created you. That before you were even formed in the womb, I knew you. I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nation. That's your purpose. Then he shows you a vision. He gives vision, children of God, to encourage us to look beyond the physical circumstances of our lives into the spiritual dimension. Because if you're dealing just with the physical aspects of your life, hear me, saints of God, then you are missing the real thing. There is more to your life than what you can see with your eyes. 
It is only when you believe the vision that you can declare in the natural what God revealed to you in the spiritual. Let me say that again. It is only when you believe the vision that you can then declare to the natural what God has revealed to you in the spiritual. Because the power to affect both realms is yours. Did you hear me? You hold the keys to your effective participation in God's kingdom because all authority on heaven and in earth has been given to Jesus Christ and Jesus' spirit lives in you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Vision is given supernaturally. But you don't have to have a supernatural event to get vision from God. You must have, though, a relationship. God gives vision to those he has a relationship with. How, how, do, how do I know I have it, preacher? Well, here it is. Vision is about seeing, not looking. Seeing and looking are totally different things. Looking regards the outward appearance while seeing considers the existence of things that are not yet visible. Did you hear what I said? So when God gives you a vision, I need you to hear me this morning, you must believe what you see even though you, you're not looking at it yet. Let me talk to this side over here. When God gives you a vision, you must believe what you see, although you're not looking at it. I'm not looking at healing, but I see it. <laughs> I'm not looking at deliverance, but I see it. I'm, I'm not looking at being debt free, but I see it. I'm not looking at my child turning their life around, but I see it. Somebody shout, I see it. Come on, type it on there, say, I see it. Here it is. I don't have to be there to see there. Because if God spoke it to my life, I wish I had about 23 folk that say, Preacher, I'm not looking at it, but by faith, I see it. So here it is. Here it is. I, I, I got to talk to you this morning because I believe that it could be that God has been giving you vision that you have not recognized. It could be that God has been speaking to your spirit, trying to give you a vision of what things are going to be, what things are going to look like. He's trying to speak to you about it, but it, it could be possible that you haven't recognized it. I want to give you a few points this morning to help you recognize vision. Here it is, and I'm done. Uh, w w watch this. The first thing that happens, here it is, that helps us to recognize vision is that Vision allows you to see where things fit. Yeah, vision, I need you to write that down. It allows you to see where things fit in. Things work better when you place them where they fit. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. <laughs> see, see, a, a vision allows you to see where things fit. Vision allows you to see where relationships fit or not. Let me talk to this side. It allows you to see where desires fit or not. It allows you to see where jobs fit or not. And oftentimes, when you find yourself in a situation that does not fit, it's because God didn't show it to you. You looked at it. I can't get no help right here. Yeah, you look at it and say, I want that right here. I want that in my life right here. You looked at it and say, I want that to be a part of my life because God puts things where they fit. Come on, come on. I need about 23 feet, two or three people to join in. So, somebody shout, put it where it fit. See, here it is. Things that don't fit are hard to manage. They take up space and they can't be used. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you're dealing with something that's hard to manage, if you're dealing with something that's taking up space, if you're dealing with something you can't use, you're probably trying to use something that don't fit. God has been showing you this does not fit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay, let, let me talk to those of you that have clothes in your closet. Just look at your Bible. You have clothes in your closet that don't fit. 
Stuff that you had when you were 19, you 53, and you still saying, I'm going to get in it. I'm going to get just, just look at your Bible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back in it one day. No, God told you to go ahead and bless somebody with that. It don't fit no more. It's, listen, watch this. It's taking up space, and you can't use it. Well, if you understand that in the natural, see it in the spiritual. There may be some people that's taking up space. There may be some people that don't fit in this season. They probably fit in last season, but in this season of your life, they don't fit. And God has given you vision to show you it's time to move that because it no longer fits. And God, watch this saints, God will not change his vision for your life. Watch this. But he will ask you to change your position. Oh, God help me to preach it right. He's not going to change the vision that he had for you, but he will ask you to change your position. I know this is where you want to be, but this is where I need you to be. I know this is what you want to do, but this is what I need you to do. I, I know this is where you want to go, but this is where I need you to go. He did it. He did it for Paul. Paul, when he's giving his testimony about his transformation in Acts chapter 22, around verse 18 through 21, right there, Paul is telling them, he says, when I was converted, God spoke to me. He spoke to my spirit in no uncertain terms. Paul wanted to stay in Jerusalem because he was familiar with Jerusalem. He was raised in Jerusalem. He studied under the feet of Gamaliel. He was familiar with with all of the high folk in Jerusalem. But God let him know that the people here, the Jewish people here, are not going to receive you. In other words, you don't fit here any longer. I'm sending you to the Gentiles. You don't fit with the Jews. I'm sending you to the Gentiles. And I come to tell somebody, oftentimes, it's not about what you want to do. It's about what God needs you to do. Can God trust you to go into the wilderness even if you have to eat locusts and honey and declare repent for the kingdom of God is at hand? Or do you have to have a major platform before you're willing to declare God's name? And I've come to tell somebody that feel like they got a city anointing, it may be that your anointing is for the wilderness. God said, I pulled you out of the wilderness because that's where you fit, because you can relate to them. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but God said, I pulled you out of it. Now I want to send you back to it to pull someone else out. Somebody shout, go where you fit. Here it is, here it is. And so watch this. Watch this. In this season, God is trying to show you. He says, I'm giving you a vision to show you where things fit. And if they don't fit, come on, Johnny Cochran, help me preach it right here. <laughs> You got to get rid of it. If they don't fit, it's got to split. Come on, you got to get rid of it. You got, you got to set it to the side. Some of you are holding on to things in this season that no longer fit your life. God says, I'm going to give you a vision. And in that vision, I'm going to make it clear to you that this is not my plan for your life. God help me in here. I'm going to make it clear in this vision. And no matter how long you try to put a square peg in a round circle, it ain't going to work. I don't care how much you say, well, Pastor Luke, I'm all in love. Pastor Luke, this is what I want. God said it ain't going to fit. I don't care how long you try to say, well, I'm going to start it. God told me to do it. God said, I didn't tell you to do it that way, so it's not going to fit. I don't know who I'm talking to in here today, but God says he want to put it in places where it fits. Here it is. Here it is. Vision allows you to see the target that God intends for you to hit. God help me. It, it, God, God says, listen. Some of you are successful, but you're hitting the wrong target. That means you fail. He said, if you just look at the vision that I've given you, I'm trying to show you the target that I want you to hit. You are successful at the wrong thing. You have achieved the American dream, but that was not the target that I gave you. And I'm trying to give you a vision so that you can see clearly 
the target that I have given you. Uh, the American uh, Academy of Ophthalmology says that a person has 20, 20 vision uh, if they can see what an average person can see on a chart from 20 feet away. So if you can see what an average person can see from 20 feet away, that means you have 20, 20 vision. But I've come to tell you that although that's the diagnosis you want the doctor to give you, is that you have 20, 20 vision, I've come to tell you that that is not perfect vision. Because there are some people that have 2015 or even 2010 visual acuity. I can't get no help in here. Meaning that they can see stuff, I'm going somewhere, from 20 feet away that other people have to be 15 or even 10 feet away in order to see. Y'all still not getting it. I, I, I don't want you to fret because they also say that you can see farther if you have some help. Y'all still not getting it. If, if you have some help, then you can see stuff that other folk can't see. Come here, let me talk to you. When God is helping you, when God has given you a godly vision, then you can see stuff that other folk, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men. The things that God, I wish I had about 23 folk to just give God a shout. If you've seen something from the Lord in this season, give God a shout right there. What I'm trying to tell you is simply this. Don't be satisfied with 2020. The eyesight or the year. Did you hear what I said? Don't be satisfied with 2020. Why? Because that is not God's target for your life. I've come to tell you that God has more in store for you. You hadn't seen anything yet. If you could just hold on, if you could just continue to trust God, let God be true and every man be a liar. I don't care what man said. If you hold on to what God said, you hadn't seen anything yet. Because God has, watch this. God has something great for you. Oh, I feel good because I believe something is on the way. I, I, I believe that I'm about to step into something and I'm not by myself. He who has it to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. I, I want you to hear. God is, God is preparing you to step into something that eyes hadn't seen. Folks said it wouldn't even possible. But God is about to allow you to step into it. Here it is. God told Moses. Here it is, he told Moses, when Moses was bringing the children of Israel out, God gave him a vision. He said, Moses, I'm taking my people out of Egypt and I'm taking them to Canaan. I'm taking them to a land flowing with milk and honey. That's the target, Moses. That's the target that I want you to hit. When Moses brings them out of Egypt, brings them into the wilderness, the wilderness was better than the bondage, but the wilderness was not the target. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Sometimes better is the death sentence for great. Did you hear what I said? Some of y'all are doing better so you stop pushing for great. Just because you're able to pay your bills don't mean you're hitting a financial target that God wants you to hit. Just because you and your husband are not fighting anymore doesn't mean you no longer need counseling because you've not hit the tired target that God wants you to hit. Somebody shout hit your target. Come on, type it in there. Say, hit your target. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. The, th the third point, and I'm done. The third point, and I'm done. Here it is. Somebody said, God, help me see clearly. Come on, say, God, help me see clearly. Here it is. Vision. This, this is the last point. I want you to write this one down. Vision allows you to see what's missing. Did you hear me? Godly vision allows you to see what's missing. Ooh, God help me to preach it right. Have you ever been in a place, here it is, Sister Holly, where, where you, you had things and everything was going good, you weren't sick, wasn't in need of anything, nobody's done anything to you, but you find yourself sitting in a place and tears 
flowing down your face and you say, I don't know what I'm crying about. God has been good. He, he's opened doors. He's made way. Why do I feel this way? Why, 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 why am I feeling kind of funny today? I, I should be rejoicing. I have what most people want. I'm really living in the one percentile. When I look at what other people are going through, I'm not going through that. But still, you feel a certain way. Well, watch this. And you look back and you say, something is missing. Because there's a void that God has placed there that can't nobody fill it but him. And once you recognize something is missing, then God will give you the tools that you need to fill it. See, I, I, I knew I wasn't going to get no shouts right here. Because we like to have vision, watch this, of those things that we want. We don't like to talk about the things that's missing. But when you have a godly vision, God will show you that the things that you want are being held up because the things that are missing. And God says, I can't give you what you won't until you address what's missing. Uh, pa Pastor Luke, I don't understand. I don't understand. Uh, I, I, I don't understand. I'm, I'm, I'm praying every day. Yeah, but you're not fasting and reading your word. Well, well Pastor Luke, I'm fasting. I'm reading my word uh, and, and, and I'm praying and I'm still not where I want to be. Yeah, because you got some envy and unforgiveness in your heart. Oh, I can't get no help right there. Well, well Pastor Luke, I've forgiven people, and, 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 and I'm still not where I want to be. Well, you're not doing everything that... See, if you really look hard enough, God will... He will give you a... If you pray about it, if you say, God, listen, show me what's missing. Because I don't want to be going wrong thinking I'm right. I can't get no help in here. Show me what's missing. Show me what's broken so that I can fix it. Is there anybody in here that, that, that's willing to say, Father, if there's anything broken in me, fix me, Lord. Fi is there anything within me that shouldn't be? Move it, Father, and strengthen me. Here it is. So Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was a rich man. He was the rich a chief tax collector. He had riches. I'm done. He had riches. Watch this. But even with all of his riches, he realized something was missing. And uh, uh, Cameron, he, he heard that Jesus was walking by. He heard that Jesus was coming by with all of his riches. He realized something was missing and he heard Jesus was coming by and he found a sycamore tree. <laughs> I wish I had some country folk that knew what a sycamore tree was. He, he, he found a sycamore <laughs> and the Bible says that he climbed up in the sycamore tree, watch this, to get a vision of Jesus. Y'all not hear what I'm saying? And because he got a vision of Jesus, Jesus gave him a new vision of himself. Come here, let me talk to you. When you get a vision of Jesus, he will show you who you really are. He showed Zacchaeus, you are really the son of Abraham. And I've come to tell somebody today that when you get a vision of your Savior, he will give you a vision of who you really are. He will show you that you are a child of the King. You have to trust the process. And, and that, that, that's where, here it is, I'm, I'm done, but that's where we miss it. That, that's the key component that we miss. You have to trust the process. You, you have to, well, I says, believe the vision. God showed it to you. Trust the process. You may not be there yet, but you're on your way. Trust the process. I know God told you in January that it was your year of favor, and you hadn't seen it yet, and you're going into this new month. I, 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 I want you to please trust the process. God is not finished. God is not done. If God said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. He don't set his watch by your clock. When God said he's going to do something, God gets it done. But you have to trust the process. God may tell you to go dip in a dirty river seven times when it's a clean river right here. <laughs> and and, and you, you, you may say, well, God, wait a minute. Now, it's a clean one right here. Why, why are you sending me over here to deal with the dirty one? It, 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 there are people right here that want to hear my word. Why are you sending me to those that don't? There are people over here that like me. Why are you having me around people that don't? Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? God says, because I'm sending you to the ones that are lost. Even if it's one, I will leave the 99 and I will go to the one. I've come to tell you 
that when God speaks to you and God has given you a vision, there are some things that you have to do, but you have to trust the process. God will take you through a process. The process is to prepare you. The process is to make you. The process is to restore you. You're not ready for some of the things you've asked God for until you go through the process. When you go through the process, you are more resolute and you're stronger. You're willing to stand because you know what God showed you. Do I have anybody in here that have received a vision from God and although you don't have it yet, you're willing to stand on God's word and declare, though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. I want you to know, I'm done, that just because you're going into another month and you have not received what God said that you're going to receive, don't you turn your back on God. Pastor Noah blessed me this morning in my office. He blessed me this morning. God, God gave him a revelation. He shared it with me. He said, God showed him that, that the sea, we we're in a season of change. Things are changing all the way around. The time changed today. The seasons are changing. The month is changing. We're in a season of changing. But the only thing that's consistent is our God changeth not. And the same God that showed you the vision, hear me, is the same God that's God enough to bring it to pass if you trust his process. How do I do it, preacher? Well, here it is. First thing you have to do is you got to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You got to say in your heart, Father, I want you to come into my heart, come into my life. I want you to change me from the inside out. I can't do this thing by myself. My strength is too weak, but I know that if you come inside of me, if, if, if you uh, uh, make residence in my life, that there's nothing too hard for you. Those of you that may be saved today, that still may be going through some things, I want you to know that your faith is stronger than you giving yourself credit for. Because you've come so far by faith, and God is not done with you yet. If you continue to hold on, trust his word, believe in him, watch God bring it to pass. I want you to pray this prayer with me this morning. Father, thank you for reminding me of the vision and for strengthening me for the process. I know you showed me what's coming to pass in my life. And although I don't know how you're going to do it, I have faith. I have trust and I believe that you will. Father, strengthen me in the areas that I'm weak. Order my steps and lead me to the destiny that you have for my life. I know that you can believe that you will by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise right there. God bless you, saints of God. I love you. Believe the vision and trust the process. God bless you. Love you.